Tonight we are trying to bring you more insights into the resignation of the office of the special prosecutor, which resignation took place on Monday. And we have on the line John Indebrugri, who is um, a private legal practitioner. We also have uh, Zoom Justice Shremsai, and we have on the line as well Linda Forikwafo. Mr. Indebrugri, thank you so much for joining us. When Mr. Amidu's resignation um, statement got to the press, your name was on every journalist's lips because they said, you should come for your stone. So I, I'm not too sure if a, a prophet is also one of your professors. I know you're a lawyer and a former politician. So how did you get it so right? What, what, what made you believe that it was going to end this way? Oh, there were two. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, good evening, my good friend, and to all my good friends in TTFM, and good evening to your listeners. Good evening. And viewers. And viewers. Now, there were, there were two basic things. My personal knowledge of uh, uh, Mr. Martin Ami, and secondly, the architecture that was put forth by the law establishing the Office of Public Prosecutor. That informed me that Martin was not likely to succeed in that enterprise. So that the way that setup was and what you knew of him, once he wasn't going to succeed, he would resign. Yeah, I haven't got that one. What I'm saying is that you are saying that because of the way the office was set up, you knew he wouldn't succeed. And yes. knowing him personally, knowing he wouldn't succeed means he would resign. Yes. Because, I mean... You, you might even listening, listening to the board chairperson. This, are you with me? I'm listening to you. Go ahead. Yes, listening to the board chairperson this this evening. Even though I, I mean, I couldn't hear her very clear. It, 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 it has become obvious that the, that that board was established as a buffer between those who would seek to interfere with the work of Martin and Martin, because I have described it as a, a very strange thing to me, that you establish the, the, the office of uh, special prosecutor as a company with a board, a board chairperson and members, and then you appoint somebody as a special prosecutor who, as, as far as I can interpret the law, is the chief executive officer of the company with a deputy. How can the chief executive officer supersede the board? It, the, and the, the, the law said clearly that the uh, special prosecutor would be accountable to the board. How come that all these things were happening and the board has said nothing? The board was a buffer between Martin and those who were seeking to interfere with his work. That is my... So, my so when you say buffer, Martin. when you say buffer, are you saying then that the board's role was to prevent interference or to enable it? <laughs> Maybe Papa is maybe Papa is not too accurate. <laughs> maybe, as you say, it was a, a shield rather than a buffer. It was a shield. A shield for Mr. Amidu or a shield for the interferers? It was a mask. A mask between Amidu and and the people who would seek to interfere with his work, just like the mask, just like the mask between the coronavirus and the person who is likely to infect another person with the virus. But then that means the board was there to protect him from interference. No. The board was to protect those who sought to interfere with his work. Really? Yes, because uh, it, it has been demonstrated. Because all these things have happened, the board has said nothing. How can you blame the special prosecutor, the chief executive of the company, 
for policy decisions like where the office of the company should be. That is a policy decision. It's not an operational decision. It is when the board has decided that the, uh, the, the office of the company should be located at cantonment that the chief executive will now go and operationalize that decision. Now everything is being made as if it is was Martin, the special prosecutor who had the duty to look for an office, to do things, to draw money, and all that. It just demonstrates very clearly what I have been saying all the time, that there was no intention to set up the office of special prosecutor for the purposes of fighting corruption. Wow. It was an election for me, and so it was, and it was one of the low-hanging fruit. So they just reached for it and tried to confuse all of us. Fortunately, God is very, very awake. So these things have happened, and the exposure is, is too graphic. So are you saying that the Martin you knew couldn't see this? Because you are saying it's very clear to you that the way it was set up, was political. Are you saying the man you worked with couldn't have known that this was not going to go anywhere? Well, I have seen something put out. Uh, I think yesterday or early this morning. That 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 Martin. Uh, one of the reasons why Martin took this step to resign immediately was because of the demise of former President Roy. And Martin, it seems it has been put out that Martin sent a copy of the report to uh, General Rollins when he was alive. Yeah. And General Rollins agreed to intervene between Martin, <coughs> excuse me, between Martin and the president. Mm -hmm. And even it was stated in that uh, uh, post that the Rollins intimated to Martin that the president was unhappy about Martin giving a copy of the report to him, Rollins. So from day one, I knew that Sanderson Rollins was very much involved in convincing Martin to take up that position. And maybe out of his respect, to, for the late Rollins and his uh, what admiration for him and so on, which some of us don't seem don't to share. He may have agreed to handle the, the thing that way. But from day one, I said that Martin mm. should have seen through that he was not going to make because the law itself was clear. It was clear in the law that you wouldn't be able to make it. Now, let me make this other point. The Attorney General, Martin was to prosecute on the authority of the Attorney General. And you see that these events that have lately taken place, is it not saying that the Attorney General didn't come into the matter? That report that Martin sent to the President was a legal document. A legal document. The, 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 prime advisor of the government is the attorney general. I thought that the attorney general should rather have been advised and invited to discuss that report with the president and not the minister of finance. Because the minister of finance was, was I mean, a target of that report. No, but, but to the extent that Mr. Amidu has said this was not an investigative report, but what he considered uh, an assessment, essentially like an audit, so almost like a yes. preliminary job. So yes, but it was a legal document. It was a legal document. So the attorney general was the best person to meet the president to okay. discuss in the first instance. And I was expecting that the attorney general would have advised the president that maybe ask the finance minister to to, to say something about it. All the right. attorney general didn't feature at all. Which is surprising Which to you. That they had shut off the attorney general before, possibly because of the earlier statements she had made. All right. The clear position she had taken. And that down, brings the thing down to this family and friends thing. 
that he, he, the president was definitely trying to protect his, his family member. For, okay, now, the, what, what do you, knowing what you know of Mr. Amidu, he writes a four and a half page resignation. President secretary has written a nine page response. Should we expect something from Mr. Amidu in the coming days? No, I, if I were to do, I would just ignore, I would ignore that thing because they didn't respond. They, 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 the president's uh, uh, secretary's letter did not uh, deal with the issues raised by Amigo. It, it was all diversionary. This business about getting buildings and so on. That wasn't the business of Amigo. As I have said, it was the board that was to take that decision. And you can't blame Mr. Amigo for that. All right. They concentrated so much on that. But the basic, there were two basic important things in that, in that uh, Amidu's letter, uh, Amidu's letter of resignation. One, that his work was being interfe interfered with. Two, that between uh, the time he issued that report to the president and the 12th of November when the Rollins died, he had come under threat. That wasn't the, that wasn't tackled in the reply. He said his life was threatened, and but the Rollins was his protector. And now that his protector had gone, he had to run away. They haven't said anything about that. Was he threatened or not? Mm. All right. So I mean, I, I, if I were Martin, I wouldn't even uh, uh, respond to anything again. We should leave it at that and let Ghanaians decide whether. Okay. His story is right. Or not. The story that comes from the powerful house is the mm -hmm. right one. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. John Debug. Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video on City TV's YouTube channel. Subscribe for more videos on The Point of View. My name is Bernard Avle. Thank you. The Point of View with Bernard Avle. Monday and Wednesday nights only on City TV.